while many of us picture Egypt to be filled with dusty sandy roads, offset with the odd pyramid, the modern Egyptian lifestyle is far from this. Despite our primary school history lessons being filled with the process of mummification, and the role of pharaohs, which are important aspects of Egyptian history, there is so much more than that hidden in the past of Egypt. For years the Egyptian pyramids have been a mystery. The giant structures have stood up to the test of time, and have even caused division with the archaeological community. One thing that researchers found strange is that the Egyptians littered their walls with details about how they lived, what pharaohs ruled which times, battles and various other things. One thing that's hardly mentioned though is that the creation of the pyramids. However, a recent discovery may shine a light on how the incredible structures were created. While it's no secret that many mysterious and almost otherworldly events occurred in ancient Egypt, most can't seem to be able to wrap their heads around how the ancient Egyptians were able to construct their pyramids. The Tuli Papyrus has been of particular interest. Found in an antique shop in Cairo and then purchased by Alberto Tuli in 1933, the claims contained in the scroll made waves throughout the world. Although the copy was then recopied several times over before translation, the papyrus nevertheless took off among believers as an ancient record of flying crafts and some of the best evidence of alien life. The beginning lines reads as follows. In the year 22, of the third month of winter, sixth hour of the day, it was found that a strange fiery disc was coming from the sky. It had no head. The breath of its mouth emitted a foul odour. Its body was one rod in length and one rod in width. It had no voice. The translation then continues. After several days had passed, they became more numerous in the sky than ever. They shined in the sky more than the brightness of the sun and extended to the limits of the four supports of heaven. It was after the evening meal when the disks ascended even higher into the sky to the south. Fish rained down from the sky, a marvel never seen before since the foundation of the country, and it was ordered that the event will be recorded for His Majesty, in the annals of the House of Love to be remembered forever. End quote. Analysis of the complete text of these translations made scholar Prince Bryce to racial winds suspects that the original papyrus was part of the annals of Thutmos II, although there's nothing that mentions Pharaoh Thutmose by name. However, if Prince Boris is to be believed, the papyrus text would then date back to around 1400 BC. At this point in ancient Egypt, the highly advanced civilization was incredibly adapted to understanding the workings of astronomy, and was familiar and knowledgeable about celestial happenings to such an extent that we can reasonably assume that if the papyrus is indeed legitimate, what they were seeing was not just an astronomical display that they did not understand, and so attributed to be unexplainable fiery disks. Many point out that during that time they didn't have things like planes or helicopters, so they could only describe the event by using things that they were aware of. This is why a lot of alleged mysterious flying crafts are described as fiery birds, because they knew what birds were, and at the time they were the only things that were flying around in the sky. This could be one of the earliest recordings of a mysterious flying object. Some have pointed out that these events can be interpreted as various things, but researchers point out that this isn't the first time that mysterious objects have been documented. One of the earliest accounts of mysterious flying crafts was observed during the 1561 celestial event, in paranormal circles, this is one of the most baffling and intriguing cases of mysterious flying crafts, and it was actually recorded. Strange sightings in our skies have often been reported throughout history, but the celestial event that occurred in Nuremberg is by far unique. On April 14th, 1561, citizens of Nuremberg in Bavaria were awoken to a strange scene that played out in the sky above them. Residents claim they saw hundreds of small objects, similar to fireballs that were exploding in the sky, as well as crafts shaped like spheres, triangles and crosses. These crafts seemed to fly erratically, 
as if they were battling each other. This event lasted for over an hour, at the end of which a large triangular-shaped craft was seen to come into sight, followed by a large crash that could be heard outside the city. The celestial battle was recorded on a broadsheet by Hans Wolf Glaser. The translation of the wood carving can be read as the following. In the morning of April 14th, 1561, at daybreak between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred in the sun, and then this was seen in Nuremberg in the city, by many men and women. At first there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood-red semicircle arcs, just like the moon in its last quarter, and in the sun above and below and on both sides. The colour was blood, and there stood a round ball of partly dull, partly black ferrous colour. In between there were visible a few blood-red crosses, between which there were red stripes, becoming thicker to the rear and to the front malleable like the rods of reed grass, which were intermingled. These all started to fight among themselves, so that the gloats which were first in the sun flew out to the one standing on both sides. Therefore the globe standing outside the sun, in the small and large rods flew into the sun. The globes flew back and forth among themselves, and fought with each other for over an hour. When the conflict was in the sun's path the sun got more intense. They all became fatigued to such an extent, that they all as said above fell from the sun down upon the earth, as if they all burned and then wasted away on the earth with immense smoke. After all this, there was something like a black sphere, very long and thick-sighted. The shaft pointed to the east and the point pointed west. Although we have seen shortly one after another, many kinds of signs, we are still unfortunately no closer to finding out what this event was. The sighting would have been looked upon with a deeply religious significance, but to modern age researchers and enthusiasts, it may have been of worldly visitors of a different kind. So what do you make of these interesting stories? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.